All right, guys, we are going to replace the fuel pump on my 1992 Suzuki Every. Um, this is basically the, uh, the luxury edition. It's got the super multi roof, blah, blah, blah. Um, they made uh, the Joy Pop 2 and stuff like that. All the videos I see are the carbureted versions. Mine's fuel injected with turbo, single overhead cam. Um, and mine, I believe that the fuel pump, ugh, hold on, let me get down underneath, is built into the tank. So you got the tank here, is your fill neck right here. And the tank's down this hole. You know, decent sized tank. That's all we down here. So there, I'm looking, and I don't see a external fuel pump anywhere, but I do see wire is going into my tank here. Let's see if I can get better views around this drive shaft. No, I can't, whatever. But there's wires right here going into my fuel tank. That's telling me the pump is built in. Now, I have a Mazda AutoZam that I've changed the fuel pump on. And uh, basically with the Mazda AutoZam, it was um, a Hayabusa fuel pump is what it took. Um, Mazda AutoZam has an F6A motor that is turbo, just like this Suzuki Every has. Um, except the Mazda AutoZams are twin overhead cam F6As. This is a single overhead F6A, so I don't know, but I didn't, I couldn't find any videos on YouTube for changing out the fuel pump. So I bought the Hayabusa fuel pump. That's my air pump for my air horns on this. You know, she's got a Napoleon complex. You may hear them. There's a slight leak. That's something I'm going to be hunting down. Let's see if I can find. Now, this is the little filter screen on this. I think that this one actually takes a bigger screen, but you know what? I believe that this will work just fine in there if, if it works at all. We'll find out. If this does work, and we will know shortly, I will put this in the description below. So you guys can get it too. Just click on the link. There's also something else I want to get done. I'm not going to do that today, but I want to put a bigger intercooler in. Hold on, let me show you. So this is the intercooler right here. See how small that thing is? And it's right next to the muffler. Right there is the muffler. So it's right, I mean, just boiling heat right off the, you know, right off the right off the muffler boiling heat right on this thing so i want to move it i'm going to put it where the spare tire went well i got a lot more room here for a bigger one so i think eventually that's what's going to happen here also i have an oil leak it's going to be another job um it's the oil supply line on top of the turbo it broke when i changed the turbo out but i drilled it out and brazed in a copper line and it seemed fine i mean i pressure tested it everything seemed fine but by the time i got it in there it must have cracked or something because this is oozing oil so i ordered a brand new one of those it's it's here i have it I, that's that's going to be another thing I have to do. And there's some rust happening over there. I need to get that taken care of as well. There's a few other spots as well. Like there's another freaking dab right here going on. Looks like somebody put tape over it to hide it. That's freaking awesome. I don't even know what that is. Is that tape? I don't know what that is. Oh, some kind of cloth. <laughs> they hit it. Um, I think Japan has these rules when you get so much rust that it's time for it to go. One of those deals, I don't know. It looks like somebody fucked up this body here too. You see where it looks like uh, it either hit something or maybe they tried jacking it up from 
This looks like this is a, a spot for the jack to go, but it looks like that it, it didn't hold tight anymore. I never go to these spots on the body. I always find like a piece of frame or anything like that, you know, to, to make this thing. There's too many other spots for it to freaking be able to jack up. You know, like if you change the tire, you can go right to this arm, here, pop it on there and it'll lift the tire right up in, you know, it's it's fine all right guys so first thing we're gonna do is take this off we got uh there's probably a 10 millimeter hose clamp we're gonna take that off get this hose removed and then we've got uh i think it's either 12 or a 13 millimeter right here and then there are there's another one right here in the corner on the other side and another one in the corner over here so we're gonna pop all of them out Hopefully this thing just comes right down. We will know shortly. Actually, so these bolts are 14 millimeter. That's what you need. 14. I have to line them up like. One more thing we're gonna not want to forget. This is a vent line. We're gonna have to take this off as well. It's gonna have to work its way through this piece of frame because it connects up on top of the fuel tank. And I may try to get it off from up here. I don't know if you can see it in here. I don't know if you can or not. I can't really tell. Hold on, let me get a better angle where I can see too. Yeah, right here. So, I may just try to get it off right there. That might be easier. Let me get that one off real quick. Can I see up in here? Is there kind of a view? You know, but there's the wires going into the top of the tank. That's a telltale sign that there's a... And it's two different sets. So one is saying, hey, this is how much fuel is in me. And the other one is saying, hey, I'm your power supply to your fuel pump. At least that's what it says to me. All right, let's get that freaking line off. Car already coming out. There's a cable here with a clip. You got to kind of pull around it. It's already trying to come out. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be the guy that has to do this with a full tank of gas but uh, I don't think it's bad it's it's only got very little in there so we're gonna take this last bolt out and hold it up with my arm and freaking drop it down on the ground gently I hope but something under this end to keep it from sitting on the ground or what gas was in there was spilling out of it and we don't want that I don't know what this plastic thing is Inside of this, is this a screen or something? Some, I don't know, some kind of screen I'm betting. I'll have to look at that later. But uh, here's the part we're wanting to get to here. Right here. So, two wires going into this. Let me get the light out here. Two wires going into this tell me that the fuel pump is built right into this. These two wires or more, maybe only two, I would say are for the, you know, it's the, the gauge, the fuel gauge, tell you how much fuel you've got. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want to put too much stress on these fuel lines, is I'm going to remove these fuel lines, possibly even this third um, vent style line, I don't know what that is. We're going to pull them all off. So what we got going on here is a bunch of Phillips heads. Yeah, Phillips head screws. They're very packed with dirt. And we don't want to strip these out because they, they strip out very easy. You know, Phillips heads always strip very easy. So we're going to take a really small flathead screwdriver and just uh, back and forth on it a bunch of times. And some off. Uh, I'm using some penetrating oil just to kind of rinse it out. Uh, maybe some carb cleaner with a straw on it. I just don't have any readily available. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick all these out best I can, rinse them out with some uh, penetrating oil, and we'll go from there. So I went around and broke them all free. The only one I wasn't able to get free was this one. 
So we're gonna we're gonna beat on it a bit. See what we can get ha get to happen. Hold on, let me show you what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna put this on one of the slotted sections like that, and then I'm gonna hammer straight down on it and create a dent inside that bolt. But I've got a little bit of a notch there. I'm gonna go at an angle to turn this counterclockwise and then hammer it this way and try to get it to turn. One hit, it turns. So now I can unscrew it. Now I'm gonna take all these bolts out. See, I didn't mess up the Phillips head part of it. I just put an extra little notch and tapped it the other way. That way I can still reuse this bolt later. Got all the bolts out. I gotta undo these little clamps now to get the wiring out. What the heck? Alright, there's one over there. We're gonna go ahead and pull this out gently, carefully. That exact match. Freaking how good. How lucky is that? All right, so this one has a rubber bit right here that goes on to this. So we're gonna have to try to salvage that. Um, right, so first thing we're gonna do, try not to drain this all over the blanket I gotta lay in to put this back up in. First thing we're gonna do is uh, this Phillips head screw. We're gonna take it out right there. This one didn't wanna go. I took a pair of, uh, these kind of guys right here they had nice sharp bits you can use channel locks and i broke it free first i don't want to screw up the phillips head bits you know i'm gonna undo that and this lift straight up off right. this fuel pump will rock out and then lift up see what's going on there hopefully your o-ring is good like mine is and then we're gonna pop this little plastic cap off Pop that off, the O-ring off, and then this little plastic guy underneath it off. Hopefully, I, I'm not going to fuck this up because it's a uh, two weeks to a month wait for parts to come from Japan. So let's cross our fingers on this one. So this just pries right off gently, comes right off of there. Then the O-ring and then this bit right here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and unplug this thing now. If I had screwed this up, which I didn't, I could have cut this pipe right here because it comes with a little hose. You can jam right onto that pipe and clamps and then jam it right onto this and then run a rubber hose like most of them have nowadays anyways. And I almost kind of have tempted to do that, but we, we won't. We're going to put it all back on the way it was. Um, I have to rewire it though. This as a different plug than this so i have to get this bit of wire here plugged into the fuel pump it says right on the pump positive negative obviously the ground is this one right here so we're going to do negative to this side positive to this side so i need two little eyelets and i hope to god i have them here and i'm going to wire them right onto this appropriate amount lengths of wire all right so again negative and positive is marked clearly right here positive and negative i've got the uh wires crimped on i usually like to solder them on but my solder kit solder kit whatever is uh at the shop not here so i got her good and crimped tight we're going to break this Phillips head right here free, and that's the ground. This Now, mine was spotless. Yours may be dirty. Make sure you clean. Freaking mosquitoes. Make sure you clean everything before you connect, connect the ground. Next thing we're going to do is the positive, which is this nut over here. I can unplug this now because uh, I, I, I've got the ground on. Let me see. It's positive and negative. Got the ground on so I know which one's which. I'm going to unplug this to get it out of the way. Got the old harness still there. Got to disconnect the positive and connect that there. I'll be careful. There is an insulator underneath. Right there, that black plastic 
is an insulator. So you have to make sure that that's there because if you have this connected and touching this metal in any way, it's just going to short out. And shorting out inside the tank is a really bad thing. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. It looks like maybe an 8 millimeter. It's actually a 7 millimeter. Like that, put the new one on. Make sure it's facing, you know, off away from any metal structure where it can touch. And then put the new nut, or put the nut right back on it and tighten it down. I just, for extra precautions, bend it upwards so that it doesn't get anywhere near. It has really got distance for metal. Alright, so now this is easily plugged right into the, uh, the fuel pump. Let's go ahead and get the uh, fuel pump set up now. Slide this little piece down on it. Rubber O-ring on top of that. There's a brown cap down on top of that to hold it in place. Get it all right up in there. It's a nice tight fit. And then plug the electrical in. Electrical where it's pointing in like that. We're going to get the bottom set up now. Go ahead and pull the plug off the bottom. I'm going to pull this old one off and reuse it. At least pull it off and... I just don't know how I'm going to get this on. You know what? Hold on. Let me do this. Let me put this rubber bit on here. So the new pump's got a full circle on it where this sits down. Let's see here. It's got still pieces of rubber here and here. It keeps it from sitting down properly. So I'm going to have to take and wear these in. What I'm worried about is putting this new bit on, it puts it back this way, like this, and then you got to get the rubber bit over it as well. Uh, and this is like really deep now at this point. And since mine's in very good shape, the kit I put up, I'll make sure it has this kind of screen on. Um, I bought the cheaper kit that had that one little screen. I thought, oh, a little screen, doesn't matter, it'll fit. I'll get the, the more expensive kit, and it'll have this type of screen on it. That way you can put a new one on. I'm going to reuse this. It's not that dirty. I'm going to give her a good rinsing, and uh, she'll be fine, hopefully. Down on, nice and tight into the new one. I've got the old clip down there, but I'm going to take this new clip out. Of the bag and then use that to hold it in place so I used a uh, five millimeter to get started on there and then a pair of pliers I set over there and tapped it the pliers with a hammer and it pushed it down nice and tight um, now I'm going to go ahead and put this on just to see how it fits without doing all that grinding out the rubber because the rubber will squish yeah look see that's that fits nice so I'm not even gonna grind out those little bits of rubber I am going to just put this guy back down on top, like so, and then get the bolt started in there. And when I tighten that down, it's just going to squeeze that nice and secure and tight right in place. Nice, tight, perfect. It won't budge. It's in there. It's perfect. All right. So now there's one last piece. I really think was the whole culprit behind this, but since I'm pulling all this, I might as well do this. I want to take this nut off and clean this ground. I think that this ground was making a bad connection. I think that was the whole issue. So we're going to pull that off and we're going to give her a good cleaning. Seven millimeter as well. I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, I'll be even happier when I know that it works. So there's always that. Let's go install this thing. Um, I am going to get myself some aircraft sealant. Hold on a second. So we're going to give this bit here a good cleaning. Um, and then put some aircraft sealant in it. Um, it's it's, it's uh, basically shellac. So it's gas that's turned bad and become tar. You know, one of those deals. I would like to get it on the underside of the seal. Like get this seal off of here and get in but this is held by two nipples in place and i don't want to damage the seal so i mean half done is better than can't do it all so that's what we're going to do we're going to just clean this bit and put sealing on it looking at this going which direction was this thing in but i noticed there's a flat spot right there if you look at the seal 
you'll see the flat spot right there on the seal. So now I know which way that went. It went like that. All right. Um, here, let me put this seal on there. You know, like a shellac. It's just shellac. So I'm going to put it on there. And it's just going to make sure that the tank doesn't leak from there. That's all. Simple. Not use silicone, gas, eat silicone. It'll make it soft and melt away. And it melts, it goes into the tank. This stuff, if it goes in the tank, it just dissolves and gets washed away. Silicone clogs stuff. Um, also, it'll start leaking because the silicone melts away and then, you know, it's leaking. Anyways, yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and set this bugger down inside and get it in place. So... And then we're going to get all the little bolts that we got down here and we're going to get them all started in. And uh, we're going to go just like you would on a car tire. From this side to 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 this side. And get them all snugged up and then half tight and then all the way tight. So three tightening, four tightening process, okay? So work your way slowly. We're going to go ahead and get these wires back into these clamps here and here. Go ahead and... Move this thing back underneath. So the long hose is going to go right here. It's this long guy right here. And stab it on. It's some kind of vent thing. I don't know what this is. Stab it on. And then clamp it down nice and tight. Do I clamp down tight? Then I took the clamp off of the, the short nipple. So the one without the clamp goes to the shorter nipple. The one with the clamp goes to the longer nipple. That's how I remembered it. I actually couldn't hold it and get those lines in place without this side sliding around. So I went ahead and put this big fill hose on there. So hopefully that'll do it. Let's see if we can get these hoses hooked up now. I've got the top lines hooked on. Now I'm going to hook up the electrical components in there. i got to get up underneath and, and get those hooked up so that I can test this before I, you know, uh, uh, put it all the way up in and make sure there's no leaks anywhere. Cross our fingers on this. There's no explosions or fires or squirting fuels. Let's see here. Get her out of gear. I have stops under the tires. Turned it on, I didn't hear any pop. Alright. Turn it on again. I can hear the fuel pump kicking on. Sounds perfect. It sounds perfect. So far, so good. All right, let's look for fuel leaks. No gas drippy anywhere. All right, guys, now we're going to lift her up in place and put those three bolts on. Doing the rest of this on my own, it's just pushing it up in place, getting those three bolts on. Hope this helped you guys out. And anyway, if it did in any way, shape, or form, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. I'll be doing all kinds of more stuff onto this thing. There's always something to fix on an old car. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Peace.